How many times while editing have you wanted to blur something out that was in frame? No, it's not a secret camera, it's just a GoPro, it's a prop. Welcome back to the channel, my friend. This is Creator Reality, and today we're taking a look at tracking things in the color tab of DaVinci Resolve and then blurring them out. So let's get started. This one's a lot of fun. I've been doing this for years and it never gets old. It's always a challenge. There are some caveats. You may have to tinker with a few things, but we're gonna go through it. So let's dive into Resolve and I'll show you what we're working with. Here in Resolve, I've got the only thing on my timeline is one clip where I am following a car. I'm stuck at a light behind them, but it shows a few nifty things and a couple of caveats to look out for. So we're gonna blur this license plate. Look, don't go doxing these people. They're driving a Hyundai. They're not somebody famous. It's not worth it. <laughs> Let's get back into this. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make sure our clip is selected and click on the color icon, the color tab. Now we're in here and everything in the color tab is node-based. So if we press Alt S and add a couple, uh, four in fact, nodes, everything that happens in node one will affect node two and so on. So let's control Z to get rid of those. We just need the one node. We're not doing any color correction really today. We are gonna blur it out. So we want to use our mouse wheel and zoom in on this plate. And it helps if you're recording at anywhere north of 1080. I mean, 1080 is so 2018. What we're gonna do is come down to this window icon right here, and we're gonna click on it. It gives us a lot of different options. You have rectangles and circles and lines and all that, but we're just gonna click on curve and we're going to click and click, 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 and draw a box, and then we're gonna end right back on there. You know you've done a good job when you get the handle, which allows you to set rotation. If I zoom out, you can change the rotation. Control Z to undo. Now we have our basic shape, and we're at the start of the frame, and what we're gonna do is come over to our tracker window, that's right here. We're gonna click on frame. This is very important, you gotta click on frame. Clip won't do it, frame will. We have a number of options here. So we have pan, tilt, zoom, rotate, and 3D. For this, we're gonna leave them all selected, but you may wanna try the different options. You can disable 3D, for instance, or rotate or zoom, but we kinda of want all those. If the track doesn't work, try playing with these last three to see what will work. And then all we have to do is click track forward. If you're in the middle, you'll wanna track forward and reverse. And if you're in the middle and you just want to track back, you can do that with track reverse. So we're going to click track forward and it's going to power through and I can already tell a problem with it. So now that I've moved over, we can tell it sort of lost track of this one. And the zooming is very important here. If you find yourself zoomed in and you're way off base, you don't know what's going on, you can either drop down and click fit or press Z to zoom to fit and then zoom back in, keeping the object in frame. And we can tell that it got off kilter. So to fix all this, what we're gonna do is click reset all, reset our tracking, make sure we're in the middle of the, of the clip somewhere, and we're gonna click curve again, and we're gonna draw a bigger box this time. DaVinci Resolve wants high contrast points to track, and it doesn't have to be perfect. We can drag it, all our points around if we need to. That's good. And now we wanna to go to tracking, click frame again. And since we're in the middle, we wanna track forward and back. And we'll let that process. And it's gonna do a better job, but probably still not perfect. So we will look at some manual keyframing to help it out. We're back to the start. We can tell it got a little big. We can actually make it smaller here. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we'll click in the middle. And this gives us a frame somewhere in the middle. We can adjust right here. Now, if you know there's a lot of movement, what you'll wanna do is go frame by frame or every 10 frames. But what I like to do is go in the middle of our keyframes and just do the ones that we need to. So if I click in the middle here now, that's really good. Click in the middle here, that's really good. Click in the middle here, it's a little big. So we're gonna just move it over a little bit. And again, clicking in the middle, they're pretty good. So then we're gonna click in the middle of our second half and we're gonna see that it really gets off kilter because the video footage shifted or whatever, this happens. This is the thing we deal with when we're editing. Yes, we have to manually adjust things. It should be automatic. That's not bad, but we'll adjust it. We'll click in the middle over here. That's really bad. We'll zoom out and then grab our rotation and just bring it over. 
and we can grab anywhere around in this blank space and drag it up. So now when I click in the middle here and I zoom in, yeah, look, see, that's pretty good. And then over here, that's pretty good. But then if I click the right arrow here and go to the last keyframe, you can tell it's cattywampus. So we're gonna move it up a little bit, zoom out, and then change our rotation ever so slightly, zoom back in, and that got us pretty close. So now if I click in the middle here between these two keyframes, it's really good. So now our tracking is done, it's time to blur. Hey, are you liking the video so far? Boop the like button. Help this spread to more people that need to blur license plates. <laughs> it's ridiculous, let's go blur this thing. So to blur, we come over to the blur tab and we drag it up to taste. This is one of those season to taste moments. And you may find that if an object is closer or further away and then gets further or closer away, that you'll need more or less blur. There, vague as mud. But basically you want to make sure that the thing is blurred to the level you want it blurred to. Job done. Now it's blurred and we're done. We go back to our edit tab. And if I go full frame and play, you can see that the license plate is blurred throughout the entirety of our clip. How nice is that? And we're done. Funny side story, funny to me, maybe not to you, but when I was first demoing DaVinci Resolve, I downloaded the free version and I was trying it against a few other editors all those years ago when I was a young buck. Bear with me, bear with me. I went in and I took a clip and I was like, let me see if I can blur something because that's something I want to be able to do. So I found DaVinci Resolve was the easiest to do that with and I've done it probably a thousand times since then, maybe even 2000. Anyway, <laughs> that's the reason I started using DaVinci Resolve and I hope that now you know how to do tracking and blurring and resolve. If you do, boop the like button. If you like what I'm doing here, hit the subscribe button, show me some love, and then watch that video. Yes, it's sure to be just as informational. See you in the next one, bye.